Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I wanted to look at a um, piece of software called Casa OS. It looks like it's like an all-in-one cloud, like a self-hosted cloud solution if that makes sense. So um, in the GitHub they're talking about if you're hosting your stuff with Google like your photos and stuff like that, you know, um, it's all about having control of your data. So it looks like they're creating a solution for that uh, where you can self-host your own little cloud it gives you like a dashboard for all of your apps and stuff as well so this is going to be a bit of a different video where rather than me showing you how to install it it's going to be me installing it and figuring it out as i go um just a bit of fun that way um and then we can figure it out and have a look together um and then see if it's cool or not so let's jump into it all right so this is the casa os dashboard um this is just the demo one on their website i'll leave a link in the description if you can have a play around but this is where I was just trying to wrap my head around what it was kind of doing um, and seeing, you know, is this something that would be clean to host? Because I'm looking at uh, creating a proper dedicated home network at some point. Um, and for that, I'm going to need like some sort of dashboard. So I was looking at dashboards uh, and I've done a video on some dashboards before, but this seems like the all in one solution. I'm really keen to see how it all works. So here we can see with these apps, right? And apparently there's like an app store. And in this app store, it looks like uh, a single all-in-one stop to <laughs> install apps, right? So um, if you wanted Nextcloud, apparently this will be your your um, or your one-stop shop for installing Nextcloud. You don't need to go off and try and install it separately. There's just like an app store for it. Um, Jellyfin and all of this stuff, right? Uh, and then you can do custom install where, okay, you can pull your own Docker containers if there's specific Docker containers that they don't have. Um, so like files, um, it looks like you've just got your own file store that you can manage your files with um, and upload your stuff. So this is the demo, uh, only so much we can see here. So what I'm thinking is we'll jump into one of my Raspberry Pis. Um, first, we'll go to the GitHub page. I'll show you the GitHub page and then we'll run through the installer and figure this out together. Yeah? Okay, so let's jump to the GitHub. All right, so this is the GitHub page. So if we scroll down, um we can see here that connect with the community developing so you can talk to them discuss issues and stuff here as a normal github page so here is the main thing so why do we need home cloud right so they're talking about having control of your data rather than um having a big service provider handle it for you right um so they've got here where they're saying are you just going to accept their decisions when they decide to change prices review content or even discriminate uh discontinue services not discriminate um but that's another thing where where you are based on locations you they can stop um you know certain locations from using their services and that could just happen at any point right um based on where you are so that's another thing um so we can see here hardware capability and compatibility so They've said the Raspberry Pi OS is sweet, uh, Ubuntu server and Debian is all good. Um, and then there's uh, community services, community support um, team running, you know, a bunch of services for looking out after elementary, um, which is just a distro version um, and a few others. And apparently it's pretty sort of straightforward to set up. So I'm essentially just going to grab this command here um, and run it on my Raspberry Pi and see what happens so let's just do that right so after like i don't know how long um it turns out that the distro i was running on my um raspberry pi was so outdated so i just put raspberry pi always um in it and <laughs> installed it instead um so now what i've done i've just reconnected to my raspberry pi now as you can see and now we're going to retry run that command again uh so let's hit enter and let it go so it just looks like it's just going to do again that dependency check it's going to update any packages and then install any dependency files as well so um it's just it's already installed docker because i think um i already just ran docker installed on this uh the install for docker on this so now it's just going to check some other stuff and pull down the casa os uh files itself and i guess we'll just sit back and let it do its thing cool okay that was easy so We've got now uh, an I the IP address we can go to, and let's see if we can hit it. Right, let's see let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Welcome to Casa OS. Let's create your initial account. All right, so let's just go in with my username TikToks, and I'll just quickly add some passwords here. All right, so let's hit create. 
this looks good. This is very nice looking um, for a free bit of software, right? For the open source. So we can see, wow, look at this. Okay, so this is kind of like what we could see on the demo. We can see our storage here, the CPU and the RAM. Um, make this a bit bigger. Um, sync your data, your um, sync anything, use sync anything to sync your files between multiple devices. That's sweet. Uh, we got files here which just looks like our local file directory um, where we can just dump files. We can add like a NAS or something. So this could be our single like place. So everyone comes to this address and can access all the files and stuff, right? With your, your account and your account would have specific permissions to access whatever, right? Man, that's cool. Um, and then we've got the app store. So let's have a look at this app store. So apparently we can click on one of these and it's going to install it. We don't have to go through the whole Docker process of trying to install this stuff. It almost seems too good to be true. So let's <laughs> let's give it a try. Let's try Plex. Plex can be tedious to install, especially on like Docker and whatnot. So let's see what happens. So let's let that continue in the background. And um, we can see here that the the network is definitely going off now. Uh, we can see the CPU is picking up. Um, uh, can we click on anything to get some details? Oh, yeah, we can click on this drop down. What does that give us? Not a lot going on there. Let me just try and make this a bit smaller. There we go. Right, uh, what else we got? Oh, Plex has just popped up. Oh, right. yeah, and now we can see that Plex is using some of the CPU usage. So it's using about 25%, 61, 75. It must be going through the install. So Let's not click on it yet. Maybe we'll just <laughs> make sure to see if it actually drops down a bit and then we'll, we'll connect to it. Um, well, we'll click on Plex and see what happens. All right, it's dropped down, it's dropped way down now. Let's click on Plex and see what happens, I guess. That almost seems too good to be true. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, you got Plex. Man, that's crazy, That that's almost too easy. Um, Let's try one more. Let's try another app. Let's go and try uh, Nextcloud. Nextcloud will be a good one to try. Let's see how this installation works. Um, we'll watch this one for a bit and see if it gives us some cool information. Man, that's crazy. That's This is like your single place to go. This um, Actually, if we continue that in the background, I think if we go to the App Store, yeah, we got the custom install like we've seen before in the demo. So if there's a Docker container you want that's not in here, but you still want it as part of your like cloud um, dashboard and whatnot, um, this is where you add it. Uh, man, that's so cool. Okay, so I guess um, oh, what we, we got some stuff up here. We got account, so that's me. Settings, search engine. Oh, uh, change the wallpaper. Uh, we can update it all through here. Oh, and we can get a straight terminal here as well. Uh, and some logs. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, right, we can see that the, the CPU and the RAM's gone up a bit, probably because it's installing Nextcloud. So we can just let it do its thing. Yeah, okay. I'll wait until Nextcloud's finished, and then we'll, we'll check it out. Now, keep in mind, this is running on a raspberry pi right now we we have to think big picture here really for to utilize this the best way possible think of a big home server right and you're connected to storage um it's got a good memory and um cpu to run you know multiple docker containers for these individual services um and then this is like your central home spot right this is where people can come in come to their apps it's just, you know, it's just like a button on the home page or a shortcut and it opens this up. They log in and then everything, all the apps are in a single pane. Um, you could then have your phone linking to all the individual apps here that are hosting, uh, all of that crazy stuff. So, yeah, there's there's a crazy amount of um, use cases here. So, let's give Nextcloud a click and see what happens. Bam. Look at that. It's here. Uh, I don't know, should we, should we quickly try to set this up and see what happens? Let's see how good it is. Um, we're just going to use SQLite, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to worry um, about
up that morning because we're just testing it out. It's not something we're actually going to use. Let's see how well this actually gets set up. Okay. This looks promising. All right. Um, I'm going to skip because I can't be bothered with the recommended stuff because I'm not actually going to keep this. I just want to see if this actually works, which it looks like it's working. All right. Here's Nextcloud startup. Uh, let's just close this. Uh, files. <laughs> You've got Nextcloud set up. Okay, that's that's really cool. That's crazy, actually. Um, yeah. Okay. That's pretty much. It. There's so much. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. I I don't really know what to say. Um, yeah. That really just made things a hell of a lot easier rather than trying to do all these docker install docker blah 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 you just have casa os as your front end and just click the apps you want and it handles all the back end docker containers for you i don't know if i need to say any more <laughs> so that's been casa os now that's been a massive surprise to me and i know i've just kind of just kind of gone over the overview but i think that's covered it in pretty good detail of just how powerful this is um i found this just by searching github and it just popped up as a self-hosted service, like a top one of the top ones. So it actually wasn't even rated as a top one. It was just in a list. Um, and I just clicked it. And yeah, this is awesome. So uh, I hope you find enjoyment and actually like a usefulness out of this. Uh, let me know if you use it and how you feel about it. Um, and yeah, just leave a comment below and let's start a discussion around it. Because I think this is really cool and really powerful. Um, and I'm going to be using this 100%. Um, as probably my own little home server. So yeah, thank you so much everyone. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, bye.